Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well and staying healthy and taking care of each other. Today is our first Sunday in which we will be starting our Mahragan curriculum and today's lesson is about the Urbana. And so to start, we can start by defining what the Urbana is. So it's a piece of holy bread and it's made of flour. It's made in the shape of a circle and this is a symbol of God's eternity. Because it go, it's in a circle, it goes around, it has no beginning, and it has no end. So, during the liturgy, Abuna, he chooses the best Urbana, and it's chosen to become the body of Christ during the liturgy. And so, the Urbana has to be perfect, and it can't have any defects, just as Christ was perfect. And so, the Urbana has, for it to be an Urbana, it has to have a few things. First, there has to be one big cross in the middle, and around that big cross, there have to be 12 small crosses. The one in the middle represents Jesus, and the 12 around it represent the 12 disciples. Aside from the crosses, there have to be five holes in the Urbana. The five holes are symbols of the wounds of our Lord Jesus Christ, and so we can count them off together. So one, we have the crown of thorns, Two and three, we have the nails in both his left and right hands. Four, we have the spear. And then five, we have the nails in his foot or feet. So those are the five holes and what they represent. On the Urbana, we also have engraved words that say, Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal in Coptic. Okay. And then, so when it goes on, he picks the best Urbana, it has to be perfect, as we said. And after he does that, he takes it to the altar. And each church can have one or more altars, like, an exam for example, ours has one, and that's where Abuna takes the Urbana. So the altar is either made of wood, like the cross of Jesus, stone, or marble, like the tomb that Jesus was buried in. Before the altar can be used, it has to be anointed or consecrated. So it gets anointed with my rune. And now people, uh, priests can pray on it and it can't be used for any other purpose than being prayed upon. So the altar can take a few vessels that we use during the liturgy. And those include the paten. The paten is the little plate that Abuna puts the Urbana in. Uh, for it to be transformed into the body of Jesus. And we have the um, throne of the wooden box. It's used to carry the chalice or the cup that we put the blood in. And then or the wine, which turns into Jesus' blood after. And then also we have um, the spoon that Abuna uses for communion. Our church also teaches us a few things that we need to do during liturgy out of respect for the service. First, obviously, we have to take off our shoes before we go into the altar for communion. Second, we are taught to bow down and make the sign of the cross as we go inside. And in other instances, let's say, for example, when we say the word holy or we worship, we bow down and we do the sign of the cross. And most importantly, we're also taught to stand quietly and be respectful and pay attention to what's being prayed. It's most important to do these things, especially when the gospel is being read. Okay, so these are the. This is the very first lesson of Mahragan. It's pretty simple. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, as you guys have gone to many, many odesses or liturgies, and for our deacons, you know a little bit more. But this lesson helps us all get a good overview of the Urbana and a little bit about the liturgy. We have a memory verse to end our lesson. And I'm going to say it a few times with you and you guys can memorize it on your own. So the memory verse is from Psalm 84. It's verse 1 and it goes, How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. Again, Psalm 84, verse 1. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. So that wraps up our first lesson of Mahragan. 
this uh, video will be sent out to your parents and you guys could watch it with them as many times as you like. I hope you guys uh, take care and stay healthy and we'll see you next week. Bye. In this video, I'll be going over a few vocabulary words or key terms that you guys might need to hear what they mean just so you can understand the lesson better. So we talked a little bit about consecration of the altar before it can be used in the lesson. And if you guys are wondering what consecrate means, so it's basically making something, usually something in a church or a church itself, sacred or holy. So before we, con before we can use an altar, it has to be consecrated or made holy. And it's dedicated to something religious, a religious purpose. The second word we are going to define is the Holy Mairun. So this is related to the consecration we talked about. And in that process, the Holy Mairun is used to anoint the altar before it can be used. The Holy Mairun is just holy oil that we use in more than one, we use for more than one purpose in our church. For example, when you guys and myself were baptized, we were anointed with Holy Mairun. And similarly, the, whole, uh, the altar is anointed with the Holy Mairun when it's consecrated. The last word that I want to talk about for the, this voc vocabulary video is the word tabernacle. It was in the memory verse that I went over towards the end of the video. Tabernacle, basically in the Old Testament, it, in simple terms, it means the house of God. And so today we can refer to it obviously as the church which is the house of God. But the word tabernacle is usually in context of the Old Testament or older times. So these are just three words that I felt like you guys might need a little bit more information on. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the lesson and refer to this as many times as you like. It's important that we all know what these words mean and their context. Thank you guys.